So it turns out that the collection of all linear maps from one vector space to another actually forms a vector space in its own right. And so that's because, well, I guess more or less obviously because there are ways to add and scalar multiply linear maps. So for linear maps S and T, mapping from V to W, and if we take some scalar from the same field that V and W are vector spaces over, then we can define their sum and scalar uh, multiples as follows. So S plus T, this is going to be a map from V to W, so a new element of LVW. Um, and we define it by saying that, uh, well, how do you define a map? You have to say what it does to an element. So S plus T applied to V is just going to be S of V plus T of V. And all those things on the right hand side are well defined, right? We know how to do S applied to V, we know how to do T applied to V. And then uh, we're going to, that'll be two elements of uh, W. And so this addition takes place in W. And so everything there is well defined. Oops. Um, <clears throat> so that gives us an, an addition. And then for a scalar multiplication, so this will also be a map from V to W. And so we say what the scalar multiple of T does to a particular element V, and it's just going to be lambda times TV. And that's it. And it's not hard to check based on this. Uh, as it says in theorem 3.7, that if V and W are vector spaces, and let me be precise and say these are vector spaces over the field F, then um, <coughs> LVW is a vector space over F as well. <laughs>